This is the Sales Podcast, where I help you define your audience, distill your message, dominate your market. I'm Wes Schaefer, your host, and today on episode 622, we have a salesperson's best friend, a bartender, at least a former bartender. So Neil Rogers uh, is the author of a book called Bar Tips, and so we get into that, um, how he came up with that title, uh, how his bartending experience uh, applied to his sales career and how it applies to yours. So you are in for a treat. So pour yourself a, a tall one, a strong one, a mighty one, an adult beverage. You know what? A cup of glass of tea, whatever. Get comfortable. Uh, you're in for a treat. Uh, if you want to grow your sales without drinking, or I don't know, if you want to grow your sales and buy more drinks, buy everybody around the drinks, maybe I can help you. Hit me up. Go to the saleswhisper.com. Go to the contact us. Fill it out. We'll get time to talk for free. And I'll see how I can help you. All right? Do that. And then come back and listen to this episode with Neil. Neil Rogers, author of Bar Tips, all the way from New Hampshire. Welcome to the Sales Podcast, man. How the heck are you? Wes, I'm doing great. How are you, my friend? I'm good. So, right. uh, you know, as soon as I got the title of this book, I'm like, I think we're kindred spirits. I must talk to this guy. I, you were accepted. <laughs> exactly. Oh, there I go again. <laughs> there we go. So I'll bar tips. Every, as much. <laughs> everything I need to know in sales, I learned behind the bar. Yeah, I, I can say like everything I, I need to know, I learned at the bar. All right. All right I got to tell you this. You may not know this. I don't, you might have looked at my LinkedIn, but I used to sell mobile homes. And there was this old joke, you know, this old, this old salesman, he's, he's bellied up at the bar. He's going through a dry spell and this cute little thing comes up and sits next to him. And he says, man, if I don't sell some trailers, I'm going to lose my ass. She says, if I don't sell my ass pretty soon. I'm going to lose my trailer. <laughs> but I digress. But I digress. <laughs> so what is up with this book, man? Are, are you like a famous bartender? Like, why should we talk to you? What, what do salespeople need to know from a bartender? Well, um, as the story goes, I, uh, you know, I've been in sales for now 37 years. I spent 10 or so years behind the bar, another four or five in total, so 15 or so in the hospitality business. And uh, you know, I've had some success on the road. Um, and I, I think I've done it very old school like and uh, golden rule ish. And um, so we uh, we were a buddy of mine contacted me. Well, I was reaching out during COVID to anybody that would listen. You know, who who wants to talk today? Right. Texting them. Who, and it would be mainly how you doing? Invariably, I get a phone call back. And the phone call back. We we get to we get to chatting, and this one guy who called me back who was 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 a wildly successful mass mutual agent, general agent. So he was he had a hundred million dollars under assets under uh, under under management, and he had hundred uh, hundred or so agents working for him. So he was, but his uh, his 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 success and his behaviors took him to a place where he needed life saving surgery. He got the he got the transplant he needed. And I talked to him 18 months afterwards. And he said to me, he was just talking and he told me all these things that he had done in the last 18 months. And I was just wowed by it. I said, dude, you're, you're, you're my hero. And one of the things he had done is he had written a book. So he, um, he says, you should write a book. I said, what am I going to write on? Right. You know, I mean, I've, I've had a good life. I've been reasonably successful and, and, you know, and, and whatnot. And then started thinking about it a little bit, and uh, we came up with this. I, I, I started thinking, and I had written a few ditties about a bar I worked at in this place called Whitehorse Beach, Massachusetts, which is part of Plymouth, your America's hometown, right? And it was a real emotional thing because, you know, as a, as a guy who was a commuter student, those were my fraternity brothers, people that I worked with in bars were, you know, because I was a commuter student. I never, you know, and, and, and not a good one until later on, I figured it all out. Um, but they, um, and so I started using pieces of that. And then how like the concept came from the time where, where my wife and I were at a chamber event right here in our hometown of Nashville, New Hampshire, right now on property. And my daughter was being honored as like, you know, one of the fastest people to watch under 30. 
you know, the chamber, they've got an award for everything. And so we went and the guy who brought five guys burgers to New Hampshire was the keynote speaker. Great speaker, nuts and bolts, plain talk, much like you'll hear, you'll read in the book, right? We, we, we strategically, well, because I don't just don't speak that way. I'm not going to write that way. He talked about how, and if you've ever worked in, in hospitality, when you when you were a waiter or a bartender or whatnot, they had pre what they call pre-meal, where they gave you what the specials were, what's 86, and then a little bit of a rah-rah speech, right? And so he uh, his speech was we're not in the we're not in the in the burger business, we're not in the fry business, we're not in the shake business, we're in the hospitality business. Now, for a point of context. My wife and I met when I worked at a place called Tia's in Boston, which again, we re referenced quite, quite a bit in the book, learned a lot there. And uh, I looked at her and said, I have never left the hospitality business. I've been bartending on the road for 37 years. And then I started, and then, so that kind of brought, got me to the concept of the book, of course, this was in, in retrospect because that, that award had taken like it was two or three years earlier. But I started interviewing people that I worked with, people that owned bars that I worked at or restaurants or whatever, guys that I worked with, people that I people that uh, had been in the business a long time. Some had uh, some are still in it. One of the guys, one of the guys in the in the in the book is uh, a, kind of a mentor of mine at, the, at, the, at that point. And he, he owns a place called the Boston Sail Loft. And that's it right there on the back of the book. And uh, so we just started, I just started coming up with these concepts, you know, it's simple, again, plain language, no, uh, when nobody's going to, there's no high level uh, marketing concepts going on here. Be nicer, say hello, smile, be on time, actually be early. Crazy, huh? So, so that's, but it's, that's all, all, it's all AI and chat GPT and machine learning now, man. Yeah, well, not for me. Yeah. No, but it's the, it's, it's the future. That's the yeah, that's the that's the latest shiny red toy you were talking about, right? <laughs> and right. That's where everybody's gonna go down that path instead of staying on their path and keeping their process going. And I'm not saying I've I've dabbled, I've I've done a few things. I I've I've I've, I've, I've 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 queried a few things. One of the things I queried was uh, about a, a, a book called Frames of Mind by Howard Gardner. And it talks about the seven types of intelligence because if you when you get into the book, you'll see that my struggle to find out coming out of high school was I was the seventh of eight of Irish Catholic family. So there wasn't a lot, as much, I have no ass to ground with my parents. I love my family, but it just was, I wouldn't call it the most supportive environment, not like we have it today, right? Right. So I'm, I go up to my mother literally at, at, in May and go, is this something I should be doing next year in my senior year? So I struggled through I struggled through uh, through uh, trying to figure out my my path. And I I stay all the way. I did go to school. I flunked out. I stayed in the hospitality business. I poured my I, I, I set my sights on getting getting a bar job because I thought that was cool. I got the bar job and discovered that I like to serve people. But then, then also I discovered as I started working, as much as I was enjoying it, um, that is not that was not going to be my life's work. And what people would say to me was that, you know, with your interpersonal skills, you should be in sales. So one of the seven types of intelligence that Howard Gardner speaks about is interpersonal skills interpersonal intelligence mm -hmm. and so it's uh so that was why i was glad to um i bought the book but got the got the cliff notes version off of chat gpt is that related to like emotional intelligence and things like that or does he, does he, I, that he doesn't that's not his gig um yeah. I'm, I'm sure there's there's some there's some parallel to there i i i, I didn't i didn't uh i didn't study that book or or, or even research it at all um there was um uh, but I, I think it's somewhat tied together. It seemed to make sense that if you, you know, if you have emotional intelligence, it's a different type of, it's not, it may or may not be classic academic intelligence. 
I just knew in my world what, what where it played for me is that my school, I was an average student. My uh, my my SAT scores and my uh, my combined SAT scores, and my class rank had one thing in common. They were both in the triple digits. Okay, so, <laughs> but I wound up figuring it out. Right. And I figured out how I learned and I figured out also how to ingratiate myself to the professors, showing up, asking questions, taking notes, going to the office hours, answering questions in the class, you know, doing the extra work go, and, and uh, be noticed that if you're, so if it, you're teetering on a B plus or an, or an A minus, you might get the A minus. So not, you know, kind of a reverse sales job there. Well, people are always surprised when I tell them that, at least back when I went through the Air Force Academy, you know, I said, if you did not want to fail out, you would not fail. Uh, I mean, it was hard. You know, we 18 to 21 credit hours per semester was the norm, even playing sports. Uh, plus, it doesn't count your military training, which is uh, essentially another class. You know, it's just not academic. Uh, so, I mean, you're grinding, you're grinding for four years. And, um, but I remember, uh, you know, my, the first day going to class and, and all of the teachers, like one of the first things they did was write their phone number on the board, you know, and said, you get stuck, you have a question, you call me, you know, you come to my office for extra credit for one-on-one. -on -one. So if you didn't, if you did not want to fail out, now it doesn't mean you're going to get all A's, you know, you might right. be a C minus student, but you would graduate if, you know, they made themselves available to help those <clears throat> that were, that wanted to help themselves. Correct. You know, and people were surprised, you know, I mean, it's a hard school, hard to get into, you know, but, but it's probably true of, of anything, you know, once I'm always trying to help people i'm trying to figure out how to create the pressure to get my clients to excel bef without having them hit rock bottom you know i've had 620 something interviews now and a lot of stories people have had over this decade that hit rock bottom you know uh, bankruptcy foreclosure divorce lawsuits and you know, then they rose up from the ashes. So uh, a lot of us probably just got to get the scars, you know, but is there a way to, can, can we create that motivation without the pain? I mean, I think, I think it's, it, it, I guess it's just wearing all where your mindset is at the time. I was, a, you know, I was really a kid. I mean, I was 17 years old, graduating high school and not, with no real no real rudder or guidance, not like we have it today. I mean, we're, we're mapping out, we mapped out our kids from sophomore year on, you know, right. What do you, what do you think? My daughter was a, a, a division one athlete. So that was foregone conclusion, but, uh, but we had a process that we went through on that. So it's, it's all in what I think, you know, for me, anything that I have been successful at, there's been a process associated with it. And again, when I think back on the school thing, it's all in every, all this stuff is in retrospect. You know, I was just I was thinking back on how did I actually, you know, turn from a twice flunked out kid in school to a 385 student. And it was paying attention and doing the simple things and ingratiating yourself to to the, the people that that hold the keys to the kingdom. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's so the same thing if, you, if you're going to. You know, it's, it, if you're approaching a client, a customer, whatever you call them, I, we have to happen to call them clients now. Um, you know, it's the uh, it's the same approach. You know, um, how long were you bartending before you got into sales? So I started when I was 19. I wrapped up behind the bar when I was 28, and I have been selling uh, from. 26 and a half so a uh, year and a half and one of the reasons why i kept the bar is because i started out with a commission most of my jobs have been commission only sure and, and uh so really entrepreneurial or or some minimal base and uh which was going to run out anyways right um, 
So, so I kept two day, two nights on the bar and made, you know, four times what I made in my pay during the week. Right. <laughs> right. So it kept me afloat. And, uh, and, and again, Jamie at the sale off was very accommodating to my schedule. So it was, uh, it worked out well and I got to still play a little bit, you know, and I enjoyed it. Right. That's good. Yeah. Uh, so you've got what we have here, 16 chapters yeah. um, <clears throat> in the book. And then from that, your website has spun off positiveactivity.net. Um, what, what are some things that carried over from bartending to sales? Um, I mean, so you talk about, you know, show up, be nice. Well, take notes, but like the importance of a proper greeting. And then what I've done and so again, as I reread the book and as I, and I think about more about it, I've now, I called it like when I was, when I was doing my little Facebook you know, local marketing, I call it golden rule type advice. Well, now I'm associating what I believe to be golden rules, or I came up with a golden rule for each of the 10 or so chapters that are actually rules of, of you know, of, of, of that I, that I picked up. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the subsequent chapters, the first couple are memoirish. So it gives you a little background what, and that and that was about to talk about my story to give to give a kid in the same situation some hope that you can find your innate skills or find what you you know a lot of stuff that you've been learning you know could be could be valuable to your to your career whether whatever that may be you might have been in a you know you might have been working on the cars with your dad wasn't my gig my father was unbelievable at it I did not get that gene um Matter of fact, there's tons of stories I can tell you about that. But he, um, <laughs> but and then the, the third chapter, again, piecing together what I was going to make a book about was research I had done on hospitality, how, how other people and other businesses use hospitality, right? That they're engaging their customers, true hospitality. And then then we get into you know the the simple uh, basic things, which are the, the importance of the proper greeting. Which you might well imagine the the uh, the golden rule associated with that is you only get one time to make that first impression. Yep. Make it a good one, right? And the way and, and now as I and this isn't even in the book. This is the one I now speak on because it's so resonant. It strikes a resonant chord with everybody. Is do you remember when Home Depot came to town? Right, kind of, right. You walked in, there's a sea of people with orange aprons ready to help you, right? How can I help you? What's your project? Tell me about your budget. Here, that was me, a long time ago. Let me take you over here. Exactly. Not anymore. <laughs> you walk in, they're hiding on you. You can't find anybody. to, And, and then the person right. who actually engages you has no clue I'm in the wrong department or whatever it may be. And I'm not a big DIY guy. I don't want to, I don't want to, but... But what it did, what it's done for me is, and the things that I need is I go to Bell Tates. He's the local guy. So guess what happens when I walk through the door? How are you doing? What's going on? Tell me about your project. What are you looking for? Oh, you need paint? Come on over here. Let me take you to the paint guy. I ran into the paint guy at one of my local, one of my local uh, lunch places one day. And I said, hey, you're the paint guy at Bell Tates, aren't you? He goes, yeah. I said, thank you. You were awesome. So simple, right? Simple thing. So how can they how how can they write the ship if they wanted to? I don't know. Like they don't seem to want to because every time I still and, and I don't go in there often, as I said. But I mean, there's a rule that there's an unwritten rule, or one that's been used by the Ritz Carlton. It's called the ten five rule. And the ten five rule says, if you're within ten feet of of a, of a customer, you ought to acknowledge them with a with some sort of nod or wave or something of that nature. If you're within five, you are to speak to them, greet them verbally. And it does. And so my challenge to anybody that was, that questions that I say, okay, do you go for walks? Go for walks. Every person you meet, say hello. Good morning. How are you? And see how you feel. 
you get that response back. You're not going to bat a thousand. Somebody's going to have a bad morning or afternoon. But the feel, the vibe you're going to get back from them and the way that you're going to feel is going to put you in a better, po more positive light. Yeah. And then, so other things like organization. Organization, you know, as a salesperson, you know, what is more important than being prepared, organized? And so, and I think back, so how does that equate from a, from a bar perspective into what we do on, on the road? Well, I'll tell you this one place T is in Boston. It is on a Friday night, at least back in the day, I haven't been there in 20 years on a Friday night. It was the busiest place you've ever seen. You had, you had 13, I'd have in one station I worked, you had 13, 13 food, food, uh, food and cocktail waitresses coming at you. You have people to the right in alcove, people to the left at the bar, but they had prepared for that. So that right here, you had the wine tap, Heineken, Bass Ale, Miller, and Miller Lite. And let me tell you how long ago this was. Doll 30 for Miller Miller Lite, doll 60 for Heineken and Bass Ale. I think the wine was a doll 75 coming out of that spout. It must, I, I'm not a wine drinker. I don't know what I don't know what it tastes like. <laughs> <laughs> to this day, I can tell you exactly the lineup. And in front of you, you have the speed rack where all the bar, bar, the, the bar liquors were. You, mm -hmm. you want a bar tonic, you got this. And so, but then they had slanted racks to the right where all the call liquors were. And to this day, we only had three call vodkas, and that was Absolute, Stolschnaya, and Smirnoff. Not today, they've got four zillion of them. Right. But I could tell you each what each shelf is today. So they had prepared to be busy. So a salesperson needs to be prepared to be busy, needs to be prepared to call on customers, needs to be prepared. So one of the things, so an example that I, I, I give, when I, when I went from the food industry, I, I sold one of my first jobs was I sold in the food industry for a distributor in Boston. So I was in and out of every hotel and restaurant kitchen in Boston on a Monday morning, I'd make 20 physical calls by 11 o'clock in the morning. You had seconds to deal with these guys and they wanted nothing to do with you, especially the new kid coming in. So you better be prepared with all the things that you think, anticipate what you think they're at, what their questions are gonna be. And they're gonna be, what's your price on this? What's your price on that? What's your price on this? What do you get for specials? And oh, by the way, do you have anything new? So I was prepared every day with those with those in a simple binder, no, no complex marketing theory, just pat them in a binder, yada, yada, yada. And then I would take something with that would be a new product. And I'd have that to just give me my 30 seconds to, to sell something. So remember when the, you know, you, the flicker you use in your grill? I remember when they first came out and we, yeah. we sold them. Oh yeah, I'll take 10 of those. So now you've made that add-on sale and, and uh, you've also given them the information that you think they needed. And then you take their order and then that, and, and did you, did you figure that out? Like trial and error? Did your manager say, Hey, do it this way? No, that was, that was when I, again, innately, I had it. Uh, I, I knew to be prepared. I knew to be organized. Um, and again, that gets back did to my. Did you know how to be prepared? Like, did you have to go like get your nose bloody for a couple of weeks and go, oh, holy crap, I gotta, I gotta tighten this thing up? Oh, there's always. I mean, you know, get a get a rep ready to go out and get beat up, right? They, yeah. they need they need to, you know, they know enough right now to go out and make some mistakes. So yes, I wouldn't say I bat a thousand from from jump, no question. But yeah, uh, so I think it's, I think it's just uh, <clears throat> some of it's pride. Some of it's maybe that back against the wall, you know, sales and marketing. I see a lot of companies, they they pay their salespeople too well. So they're not motivated to to innovate. You know, they're, they're sitting back on their haunches, waiting for leads to come in. They complain if they're not perfect, you know, instead of getting up and getting after it. And, you know, the old Ogilvy adage, you know, we must enter the conversation going on in the mind of the prospect. You know, we've got to put ourselves in their shoes and say, you know, what's what's going on in their minds? How what's this bar owner, bar manager, uh, operations 
manager thinking at, you know, 8.30 a.m. on a Monday morning? And how do I, you know, because we have to, we have to meet them where they are. We have to adjust how we sell to match how our prospects buy. Of course. You know, so, okay, I got this 37 page full color brochure, but, you know, I got one minute with them. I better dumb this thing down, right. <laughs> you know, and don't take it personally. Exactly. Uh, but everybody wants to take it personally. They want to, you know, the laptop lifestyle. You see all these people, you know. Taking, I would never take a laptop to a pool. I, I've never taken a laptop to a pool. <laughs> what the hell are people thinking? They're sitting on the side of the pool, acting like they're working. Like, give me a break. I, oh, can't, even, I can't even see the screen. <laughs> I can see the screen. It was like, I'm not letting water get on my laptop, but you know, I, I digress. <laughs> uh, but like, so I know somebody might be listening to this and saying, okay, great. That worked when beer was a dollar thirty. Um, now everybody only gives us thirty seconds. Hell, now they only give us three seconds. They're going to skim our email. They're going to skim our social media post. You know how does selling face to face thirty seven years ago translate to selling over Zoom today? Well, it's, it's, it's clearly a, uh, it's not, uh, it's not optimal in, in, in the way I see it. I think your first sales job is to get in the building. Now, sometimes that's, that's not possible. I mean, if you were I, you were I, it's not possible. You're in Southern California. I'm in Nashua, New Hampshire, 35 miles outside of Boston. But I think it all depends on your industry. You know, I sell, we sell to, uh, we still sell to, Currently, we sell to um, corporate, you know, corporate clients, and we try. You know, it's it, it's been you know for the last obviously for the last four years, it's been a little little bit of a challenge, but we we can still get in to see them. But we have to have a compelling reason, and you have to you have to be constantly, you have to be creative to be marketing to to, to get in front of them. If that's your goal, I mean, I, I can't imagine. I, I feel very vulnerable, honestly. Um, in this Zoom world, because a lot of the things, some of the things we talk about in here, reading the room, how do you read in the room on a Zoom call? You know, where's the body language? You know, so there's some, or some way, shape, or form, you need your, you to use your creativity to get in, to get in the building. And, and sometimes it's just not feasible because they were all, it's working from home. But can you meet them in a, in a coffee shop down, down the street? Would they, would they be up for that if you got into town? Maybe. All depends on what all depends on what your opening silo is in terms of your what your first sale is going to be and how much. How but much are you money. trying? Are you trying to sell local? Or, I mean, are you going to? How do you justify going to Kansas City to meet someone in person? Oh, you'd have to. Have, that's what that's what I'm saying. You'd have to have your opening. Your opening sale would have to, but potential of the opening sale, and you would have to would have to would have to. Um, you know, give you, give you the, the, the courage to make the investment. Now right. I invest my own money in our, in whatever we do. So sure. it's for me, I don't have to ask anybody if we say, listen, you know, a trip to Kansas city is going to uh, in an overnight or one day, or it's going to cost me a thousand bucks. Is that worth it? Sure. It's not that develop, development of that relationship. I can right. make the call. I don't have to run up the flagpole. Um, so I think that I think that you'd have to that's you know that's the assessment that's really understanding no one if you if they can buy what you sell first law of business development you know is like you know am I am I creating a list of people that can't even buy what I sell yeah so how's your research gone are you are you you know in our world today everybody can buy what we sell now are they going to buy what they sell you know sure. but we you know, we're in the, we're currently, we're in the swag business and have been for 26 years. Yeah. And, um, but we take a, we take a creative approach. We, we, there's, there's a guy that used to have this sale. It was a sale. One of the, uh, it was a sales trainer that I uh, did some um, phone calls with. And he said, you got to eat your own dog food. For sure. So we, we practice what we preach. Yeah. We use multi-touch multimedia campaigns yep we don't uh, i i believe 
could get in all sorts of trouble right here. I don't believe in digital marketing as an exclusive way to motive to 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 get somebody to, to buy. I know it's big. I get it. But in in the when you know if you if, you know and, and it all depends on what you're trying to do. Well, in a truly B two B complex sale, it's not going to be all digital. At some point, right. at some point, there has to be at least a phone call, probably a Zoom meeting, probably multiple Zoom meetings, and probably meeting in person. I mean, on a on a bigger sale. And but what I'm seeing and hearing as well through through the interview and and customers um, is. Well, a lot of companies are pushing, you know, this return to office. A lot of workers are pushing back on it, but still there's more um, people are going back to the office more than ever in the last three years. Uh, but people are also hungry to meet in person again. Uh, conferences are coming back. Yeah. Uh, and as people get to the office, even if it is just to meet for coffee or lunch or dinner or whatever, people are like, Golly, I haven't been taking to dinner in three years. You know, this is great. Uh, so I think that old school methodology uh, still applies and, and it's probably better than ever. And, you know, I made a post just a couple of weeks ago because you always hear people, you got to zig when they zag, but they're all doing the same stuff. It's like, okay, you got AI and all this bulk stuff, media, you know, merging, screen scraping, blasts. It's like, okay. The zig now to that zag is personal touch. That's you know, what we do. People are like, "Oh, wait, what?" You know, kind of you see the smoke blowing out of their ears. You know, like does not compute. Wait, what do you mean? Uh, but I, a lot of people don't. They don't have any interpersonal skills. Yeah, you know, I've got five daughters. I can tell you. They're not being courted. <laughs> and it's not because they're not cute. <laughs> you know, my, my oldest daughter, she's she's 23. She dated one boy and married the second one. <laughs> she dated. <laughs> my my 21-year-old, she's had a few boyfriends. Um, they ended up being losers. Uh, she hardly goes on any dates. Beautiful girl. My 18-year-old just graduated high school. Beautiful. Didn't go to prom, didn't go to anything. Like boys, they don't know how to date. They don't know how to engage. No. Uh, my oldest, he's 26. He confirms it, right? He's he's like, yeah, he's a bunch of dudes. He's got a girlfriend, but uh, they so even like they 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 grew up with iPads and and video games, and nobody has interpersonal skills. So in this process, one of the things I did, again, another COVID lifesaver, did a number of things that uh, we kept our business. Our business was actually pretty decent during COVID. Um, and uh, but one of them was I, I mentored a couple of young men that were that were struggling, that didn't have um, that just were like me when I was their age. Maybe they were a little bit older than I, I, I was, but you know, couldn't get his footing in sales, trying to figure it out. And, I, and so I sat with, so I, I, would, I, would, I would talk to him every week and we would get him into a process and we'd take him through our positive activity process, which the first part of it was getting your mindset right. So I, I, we taught him that you should get up and move. Simple things. You know, have you have you ever meditated before? Take five minutes and just listen to your breath every day. Get out, move your body. Do 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 um, conscious acts of of generosity. Write down three things you you you're, you're thankful for. You know, a little gratitude practice. So I got him going with a five minute practice every morning, and he he loved it. It's almost like I think back, I harken back when. When we had a beautiful, beautiful, yeah, we're, we're, we live in a golf community now and we, we sold our home and all that. We just, my wife and I left. And I remember the kids, they were all doing the, it was, you know, the, they were playing, they were playing video games together, but in each other's face. Remember that routine. Sure. When they went out, when they went out and actually ran around the yards and played and got uh, flush they were the happiest they ever were. Right. So this kid, this guy, 
he was, it was just a little bit of a right of the ship. I'm not taking credit for all of his success. He, he you know, he found the job. He just got his mindset right. So he was living with this beautiful woman. He was engaged to be married, found the job he wanted, and he's happy as a lark now. And, and, and it's, and I know he's making a lot of progress in there. And I think that, you know, I'm not taking all the credit, but I think these, sim- you know, some of these simple philosophies, simple, simple processes are, are what these folks need. Like, I mean, the same thing I said about the importance of a proper greeting. Oh, you don't believe it's good? I'll tell you what, walk down the street, say hello to everybody you meet, see how you feel. And it works. I thought like in the Northeast, it was like, what are you looking at? Isn't that, that's not how y'all greet? No. No. Come on. I saw Andrew Dice Clay. That I mean, that's yeah. what Well, he's, he's New York. That's a whole other kettle of fish. What's, that's New England. That's, that's the Northeast. To me, I'm a Southerner, man. That's, that's the Northeast. No, there, I tell you, one of the things that we do every weekend, so we live, we live here in New Hampshire, but we have a place in Plymouth, Massachusetts, which is near that first bar I worked at. And my wife and I, every time we go out, we sit at the bar to eat because we invariably meet somebody that's sitting at the bar that wants to chat and we get to know them. I sell a book every time I go out to dinner or for breakfast. I just start talking about it. It's like, you oh, bring them with you? you have no, them all they're going to do is go like this. Amazon, boom, done. Of course, I've got promotion. I get promotional openers. I get promotional. Yeah, check- I don't want to send them to Amazon, though, because you never know who they are. That's the bummer. Well, yeah, you're, you're looking at, yeah, that's your, um, that's your, that's your, your, I don't, I haven't trained my brain to think that way yet. I'm just, uh, I'm just, so I just pray to God they buy the book and they write me a review. So I'm living on hope on a lot of this stuff. But, <laughs> but what, what's happened is, you know, to, to what we guess what we're, we're using it for. We're thanking our clients by sending them a book. Sure. You bet. So and that and so our our goal, our, you know, and it's been getting they're, they're thrilled to get it. And it's obviously I sign it and date yeah. it, say something nice to them. And yeah. And so far to this point. You know, it's not like a, you know, a laundry list of reviews, but the reviews have been pretty strong, again, because of our intention of being simple and direct. Yeah. And I, I wrote a, I read a book called On Writing Well. And that was what we, we were taught. Concise sentences. No big words. I don't have any big words. Right. Yeah. It's not how I talk. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to try to. Have you break out the the the, the source on, you know, on you? So yeah, I think the Gettysburg Address is what like two hundred and sixty two words. It says a lot. I think like the majority of them are one syllable words. Well, I'm a big yes is more or less is more guy. Oh I mean, yeah. I don't. Uh, my uh, we're having. Uh, 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 when is this going to uh, air? Uh, about a week. Okay, so I can't tell you the story, but. Uh, uh, so there's a surprise coming. Um, and so the, um, uh, where was I going? What were we talking about? Uh, I, I can push it back if you want. <laughs> I can schedule this whenever you want. <laughs> oh no, I, I'm, I'm happy to get it rolling. No, no, okay. it's not that, it's not, a, not that important. It was just for me. It was, it was a story. It was a story I was going to tell. Le- less, but better. I'm sorry. About, it was about less, but better. Yeah. So, um, I believe that, you know, the new trend when you go to a wedding Everybody's gonna speak. No. And it's like, okay, let's get back to the band, the dancing, the food, the beer. Enough. Yeah. Of, you know? Yeah, we had uh, we had two weddings last year, and uh, I had my my second son and my oldest daughter, they got married, and um I guess I guess it was my daughter's wedding so because you know the the groom's family pays for the rehearsal dinner right and yep and so we're at the rehearsal dinner and uh you know somebody because you know the 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 parents were speaking whatever and somebody said they aren't you gonna say something i'm like this ain't my gig <laughs> you know like, right. yeah if if they ask me to i i'm sure i can come up with something but nope <laughs> no need to speak and uh I'm um, in the Knights of Columbus here in our in our church 
and uh, I'm the grand knight right now. We just did our big fundraiser, the golf tournament. And I have some guys that run it. They ran it last year, did a great job, and he ran it again this year. And then the, the past grand night, he, he's running with it. And we're at the dinner and the raffle and all. And they, you know, they bring out the big check to give to the beneficiary. And I'm sitting with a woman and she's like, how come you're not up there? Like, I don't have to be. <laughs> it's like, I don't want or need the microphone all the time. Let someone else run with it. You know, everybody's like clamoring for the spotlight or whatever. It's like, that's too much energy, man. I'm lazy. I want to have a drink. <laughs> I'm here for a good time. Yeah. I mean, this is what you do. I mean, I speak too. It's like, but okay, you guys handle this. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. I'm doing this. Yeah, I'm good sitting right over here eating some but, prime rib. No, well, I think that's so. Bringing it back to a sales thing, right? What 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 makes when do when do people start losing the sale? They talk too much. What do they say that, that if, if 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 you got them if you got them to commit, the next one who talks loses. That's yeah. the, is the golden rule on that one. Yeah, when the sales made, shut up. <laughs> Two ears. One mouth, <laughs> use them in that proportion. Use them appropriately, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, can any can you argue with any of this stuff? I mean, it's like you know, it's, oh, I know, but people they keep wanting something new and fancy and whatever. And I'm like, I'm like you, and, and maybe you know, I've just I've done this for a while now. Part of me is jaded. I get it. Now I'm a grandpa, so I'm like, get off my lawn, right? Uh, but. People never forget how you make them feel. And, and I'm on the receiving end, having done this a long time now, my inbox, my email inbox, my social media inbox, especially my LinkedIn inbox is full of junk. It's full of crappy right. pitches. Um, and it's all, none of it is personalized. Literally 1% is personalized. And, and I know because I discovered accidentally, because I put, a, a dash and a red phone in my first name on LinkedIn just to stand wow. out. And I took the phone out. I still have the dash though, because when people screen scrape, they bring over the, the dash and the, and the icon. So I get emails. Hi, Wes dash. I get Neil P. Yeah. So that's how I know it's been scraped. And I, and I know it's, so 98% of those I just delete, you know, I'll, I'll skim some of them if I've got time and 1%, you know, end up being okay. And I might reply, but if somebody actually takes the time to reach out, it's like, Oh, hell, okay. I'll talk to you just because you took the time and right. personalized it. You the, know? the, the, uh, the thing that I, the only thing that I, I like some days I want to have a little fun and I just say, does this stuff really work? Please tell me it doesn't work. I mean, you, but this is, I think this is back to our original conversation. The, um, this is the, 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 the paths people will go down to make themselves feel like they're, 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 they're marketing or they're, you know, or they're, they're, they're starting their sales process. Well, yeah. I sent out 400 emails today. Beautiful. Guess what? I got 400 that I didn't look at today. And I delete yeah, them. I, I, I've, I've worked with databases since I was still in the Air Force in 95. Uh, worked with CRMs, software as a service since 2007. Uh, it does not take more than about, in five minutes, you can skim 500 names, 1,000 names. You know, you sort them in an Excel spreadsheet. I can scan all those names. Like, oh, is there anything weird? And clean it up. I mean, five minutes, 10 right. minutes. Is it worth 10? Is it worth 30 minutes to clean a 2000 person database to at least make sure the first name is right? You know, and they won't even do that because it's all about churn and burn. Oh, I've got, I got my VA using AI, you know, SSL and a B, you know, what's your ROI and your KPI? And I, whatever, dude, like, good for you. It's like, I just, I don't want to grow that way. You know, yeah, it's on my gig. The uh, I'll give you a story about a, sh a shoe store here in town. He um, been around for I don't know, certainly 
60 years or so and uh, started on a side street in downtown Nashua. Nashua is about a, a community of about 80,000 people. Then he bought a building, bought an old department store and moved his, when his, when the son took over, he bought, he bought the building downtown. It used to be a department store. So he's going to double, clearly double his footprint. Once again, home run. Decides he no longer wants to be downtown and moves and buys a building off of the highway. There's no way I'm thinking this is not, you know, this is not going to work. Not that I didn't think it was going to work, but I didn't think he was going to have the volume because people were used to, he's been around for so long. He went up there, home run. You know what the common denominator is? You walk in the door, they greet you. They ask you what you're looking for. They take you over to the department. They sit you down. They get the, uh, the uh, oh God, I should remember what, what it's called from my, you know, the, the foot measurer, whatever, I can't remember, yeah. Braddock. 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 Braddock or Brannock? I, Brannock. I don't even know that name. I'd have to Google it. <laughs> and, uh, and so, and they, and they bring you out five different pairs. Yep. And they check your size. There's still a place for service to win. Yeah. I tell people all the time, it's like, I, I gladly pay more for Apple. If for no other reason that I get a human being on the phone quickly, a human being from America. Right. You know, and I have, I've had an overseas VA for 12 or more years. I've got nothing against overseas people. But when I need help, I need to understand them. Right. And I will pay for that. Right. Get me quickly. You know, their menu is minimal. Boom, mm -hmm. boom. You know, and you can use voice, whatever. But it's like support representative, you know, iMac. Boom. I've got a human. I'm like, praise the Lord. Right. You know, so many places. Click menu, 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 wait and hold. Your call is very important to us. You know, then you get somebody overseas, you know, yes, I understand this is important. I will do my best to help you. I'm like, okay, if you really did your best, your owners would get me faster support, you know, but it, it, it doesn't look good on the bottom line, but they just, they can't, they can't see the bigger picture. And so it's just a race to the bottom who can, who can do the least human touch and still stay open. It's, it's mad. Back to our Home Depot example, right? Same thing. Yeah. Make them yeah. feel good, man. It's um, but yeah, we uh, that's what we like to do here. That's we 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 open what we call, and I'm, I'm, this is not my phrase. Obviously, everybody's used it, but we over deliver. We anticipate something that they we surprise and delight them. Yeah. You know, oh boy, thank you for that. Yeah. That's my ABCDE, attract, bond, convert, deliver, deliver or delight. Then right. you endear. When you endear, you're back to attracting. And it just goes round and round and round. There you go. Just, another, just, just a different acronym. That's all. Piece of cake. That's it. Well, all right. Speaking of daughters, my daughter is moving. I've got to go unload a truck. Oh, boy. I'm not looking forward to that. So. You know, I'm a grandpa now. I shouldn't have to do that, right? That's going to be my excuse from now on. I'm a grandpa. No, I can't do that. Big my days of moving furniture are over. <laughs> it's a thousand dollars. Get a move. <laughs> yeah, luckily I'm just uh, helping them unload a couple things because I'm like, I got to be at jujitsu at noon. So I'm like, you don't have me for long. <laughs> so Neil Rogers, author of Bar Tips. Your website is positiveactivity.net. All the way from New Hampshire, man. Thanks for coming on the show. It's been great. Thanks, Wes. Enjoyed it. Hey, have a good day. Too. So what business are you really in? That was a great story with the, uh, the five guys, you know, being in the hospitality business. Uh, I heard a similar story about McDonald's when they were speaking at the School of Business in uh, at UT Austin, you know, saying, hey, we're not in the burger business. We're in the real estate business. You know, we find valuable property and we, and we increase its value. It just so happens that putting a fast food place on the corner is what maximizes the value. Um, you know, so what business are you in? You know, as entrepreneurs, as salespeople, you know, we find a need and we fill it. We make the lives of our customers easier 
we do that by helping them make their customers' lives easier and better. You sell internally as well. Are you making the lives of your staff, your employees, uh, your bosses, are you you making it easier for them? You're always selling. Um, Alec Baldwin kind of got it right. Don't always be closing, but you're always selling. So understand that. That's why I say to make any sale, you must make every sale. How you come across, you know, I had a call today with a big company, big tech company. And, and I love the founder, super smart guy, adds a lot of value, great content. Uh, so I booked a free call with them and it was just terrible. Young guy, kind of unsure. There was another guy that was silent, wasn't even on the video. And I don't know if he was a mentor, if he was supervising, if he was a manager, I don't know. He, he did speak towards the end when they could see they were losing the sale. Um, but if you do one thing wrong, right, you can do everything right. You do one thing wrong. You know, like baseball, right? You can, a pitcher can throw, you know, two good pitches, boom, get it bases lo- or uh, full count. If he just messes up one pitch, boom, big difference. You know, football, quarterback, and incomplete pass, incomplete pass, even a third incomplete pass, but the, but the coach trusts him. Boom, okay, fourth one, 10 yards, keep going, keep going. So in that regard, right, kind of the opposite. So one good thing keeps the dream alive. You know, so for the batter, one good swing keeps the dream alive. Conversely, in sales, one bad thing out of all those good things. It's like that quarterback that just marches the team down the field, you know, from the one-yard line to the other yard, one-yard line then fumbles the snap that's what a lot of people do uh, when it comes time to talking money when it comes time to engage with the the individual the human so all the social media ai blah blah, blah all that worked it got the person to the one yard line got you to the one yard line can you get it across the goal um, i heard a statistic somewhere you know saying that something like the top five teams uh, in in the NFL are those that are the best at scoring in the red zone. So not special teams, not defense, not this, that, or the other. It was can you convert? So how does that relate to you? Can you convert when it gets close? Can you convert when everything's on the line? A lot of people struggle with it. A lot of people get nervous. Can you remain calm? focused keep the sale on track i can tell you it's like anything it's not hard once you do it a lot but it is hard in the beginning and i've told this story as well before it was back in 2006 and i was going through a 12-week sales training coaching program uh, with a guy uh, i didn't know but i he was part of an association of a group that i did know and trust so that that trust spilled over to him, rubbed off on him. And then once I got involved with him, I loved what he was doing. And I was, I was starting to get a glimpse of like true like professional sell, selling. And I'd been in sales now for nine years at that point. Uh, I had been making $100,000 since 1998. Uh, but I was working hard, not smart. And, and Steve gave me a, a structure a framework and I was sitting outside one of my what became one of my top clients here in Southern California I was in Torrance and uh, and I realized that everything was wrong about that meeting how I went went about setting it up I mean the good news is I had the meeting the bad news is there was no structure there was no agenda there was no understanding of how things would go and from you know, and I told Steve, I said, well, good news, bad news, right? So the bad news is I don't have any of that set up. The good news is this is the last time I will go into a meeting without those things set up. Um, other sales trainers will say, you know, focus on the close. That's where the, the money is. And you could argue, well, that's like the red zone. You know, you got to close, you got to get across the line. Okay, maybe. Uh, but if you open well. If you do everything else correctly, um, then the close gets much e- much easier. 
So, you know, so for that football team, if, if you're hitting, if you're blocking hard, if you're wearing down the defense, if you're varying the, uh, the snap count, if you're uh, doing crazy formations, keeping the guys uh, off balance, got them on their heels, it just it makes the, that conversion so much easier. So how do you open? How do you engage? How do you follow up? How do you book the meetings? How, how do you engage the prospect in written correspondence, emails, and direct mail if you're doing it, uh, text messages, social media, it all matters. So do you have that all together? I would argue you probably don't, not because you're no good. It just If you haven't focused on it, it you don't have it. It doesn't just happen. So if you're ready to make that happen, let's talk. All right, go to the site, fill out a time, get a free call, talk about your issues, and I'll talk about the various programs, see if there's a fit. All right, avail yourself of that. You'll be glad you did. And I'm glad you listened to this. I'll go sell something. <laughs>